Hello and good morning everyone. For this, we're going to start off splitting our view. Also, we need to make sure our keystrokes are being displayed. And we're going to turn this into an image editor. And from my references, I'm going to just drag over the object of our affection that we'll be talking about today. And that is our beloved pressure washer. So I'm also going to split this window so we can have one view focused on that area. And I'm just going to bring in a screenshot of my peer ref because I can't show the peer ref in this without clipping Blender to be an even smaller size. But on this image, I have a couple of just different images of this particular engine just so we can get in and try to get a little more accurate with it. However, I'm also going to have peer ref open on the side, which will be showing these same images too in an even higher resolution. So just a conundrum. I wish there was like a peer ref in Blender plugin that just took over this and just made it the peer ref window powered by the external but you know let's get started so i'm going to press t and close the t panel and you know we actually don't even need all these icons on the side they actually get in my way so we'll just turn those off too and i'm going to press d and jump over to circle and we're just going to start off with a star so looking at the image um, usually whenever it comes to counting these radials i just count a fourth so I'll go like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 um, times 4 is 48. So let's go ahead and get this party started. We're just going to jump this up to a 48. I know my count isn't the greatest count, but it's all I got. Let's also jump from static dots to just generic dots because then we have world dots. And we're just going to draw the shape out that is going to be kind of the base of our engine. And we'll press B to bevel it and roll it down to one segment so it's really simple. And we're just thinking about how tall we want this to be. And just click and apply. And this is now our result. So first thing I'm going to do is apply all the geometry. And then from here, I'm going to just try, even though I know it won't work, is selecting a single edge and press Shift G and choose length. And it actually worked better than I thought. So... There's Blender making a fool out of me. How dare I make an assumption. And we're just going to deselect everything else that didn't matter. Because all we want are just these same edges. Because one of the things I do see looking at this image over and over and over is that this definitely has something more like that going on where it kind of terminates on the way. In fact, if we really analyze the image and overanalyze the image like lunatics, which just happens to me as I continue on with reference images we find that we need to grab this and merge by distance to clean all 96 of those bad bad points let's press alt V and E in order to set our view to EVHQ and while we did all these kind of changes we still do have the flexibility to basically circle select this whole area and press S and Z in order to scale it out. You know, I feel that these are a little bit flatter than what we actually came up with. So I could draw it again, or we can just move on with life. So I'm gonna opt for the latter because there's always an opportunity to redo these things, but we could also just draw it out from scratch and attempt to get it even more accurate. But after all, this is such a small piece and we have so many pieces to go through that the fun hasn't even shown itself to us yet, the true mini boss of this adventure i mean right here it's facing us in the face but this is pretty much the easy part so with something like that we can now you know truly begin so i'm just going to grab this face extrude it up that's a lot of points and we're just going to control click mark in order to bevel this and something like that and i haven't been using as much hops lately on these topo studies but they definitely these tools definitely have their place. So now I'm looking at these little notches on the side. So the party gets started a little earlier than I'd like, but let's do it. With this edge that we added, because of the bevel above, we ended up adding it to the vertex group. So we got to remove it from the active group. And now we're fine with adding loops because we're no longer adding them in this area, which will add them to the vertex group. Just a, a blenderism, you know, not really a thing with us, just blender. But, you know, once you're aware of it, it's not so bad. So really eyeballing this, which is my least favorite way to work or my most favorite way to work or my predominant way of working, however you think about it. So let's just press E, Y, 
and we're just going to bring this out and this is actually a lot of points you know that's what i think about as i mess with this so let's grab this entire area and just control x to dissolve it unto nothingness and let's remove the bevel as well and i'm just looking for a little mercy on this piece and it looks like we do get that mercy right here so i'm going to change my count to something like 32 because 32 is just safe for me however we want to get out of star and go back to polygon so that way we can draw an actual circle and so let's just press a to turn it into a make and we're just going to bring this up like so so we're just continuing on just with a slightly lighter more controllable circle because having a circle beyond our control definitely isn't what I felt felt we would be doing today so let's just grab this extrude it and I'm going to press S and X and bring this in and then we'll bring in a loop but we'll press E to make it even and we're just looking at it looking at the image and I think we're off so I'm going to grab an additional face we'll extrude it out we'll scale it in look at the image look at what we have Looking at the image, this area looks just a little bit flatter than what we're giving it credit for. Maybe something like that. Let's press E in order to add an edge to this area. And we don't have any sharp marking going on, so that means whenever we subdivide it, we can actually see kind of what our result is going to be with the type of geometry that we're giving it at this very second. So personally, I feel that there's just no way we're going to be able to make it all the way to our destination without grabbing these edges, rolling the bevel once, setting the perimeter to one, and then just kind of hardening up the perimeter because you know me, I'm obsessed with perimeters. They must always be protected. Let's slide this over. And I'm just thinking about how to solve this topologically, but also efficiently without any sort of distortion and that's the first thought that comes to my mind is something like that we can always bring a loop in on this side however we can terminate that loop short and bring it in like that then form a connection and then bring it down there let's go ahead and get our party started with vertex snapping and from here let's just grab this edge dissolve it we can press i to inset and now we're looking at something like this so a little bit of topology as far as redirection can go a long ways when it comes to geometric control since we still have mesh machine going we'll continue on using it in edit mode but the select tool the jury's out on that one so let's press q and take a look at what we have so far and because of the simplicity of our geometry we can still Take advantage of a little bit of the flexibility that we have let's also turn off auto smooth which just devastates the top so we might as well protect this perimeter as well just so we offset our ugliness on the inside but we're just looking at this because whatever we do here we're going to be committing four ways around so now is the time to make any drastic changes like what i'm doing drastic changes and we also have an opportunity to add a circle at this time so we could also just plan a circle just go ahead and get that out of our way so just GG you know the usual what are you doing all right and let's place a loop here and I'm just going to right click or actually we're just going to press Q and just choose circle and roll the segments down to something simple something solvable and let's press S and Z right click and there's no option for bridge but if we go into edge mode and we right click there's an option for bridge edge loops and that will just bridge these two areas so by pressing shift tilde we can give them a boundary loop of protection, kind of offsetting the stress that we're about to be putting on the very turn of the circle itself and actually mitigate that to be something that's happening on a flatter area. So, you know, me and flatties, I don't care about them. 
but something like that is a little bit more optimal for what we're going for. However, I do see knots occurring in this area, so it does make me ponder what can be done to improve it. So we're just looking at our geo, just thinking real fast, what are we gonna do when the knots come for you? You know, we could go ahead and begin mitigating this and just ignore it and pretend we don't see it, but you know, every mesh, I try to pick some battles and fight those battles and hopefully win those battles. Let's take this all the way up here, alleviating this stress, but takes the tension all the way up to this area, which I don't think is a better strategy. In fact, let's try being drastic. And I think that actually works a little bit better for us. So maybe something like that, you know, it's always a deep contemplation whenever it comes to, however, let's undo because I think I had something a lot sharper before. And so let's test out the thriftiness of our undo at this moment. And it looks like today's a good day to undo. So I'm going to just try consolidating all this geometry that isn't on the immediate side I care about. Dissolve this, slide this area over, not gonna work, slide this area over, could possibly work. Let's Alt V and look at our wireframe. And this is the solution that we're attempting to run with this particular area. And the amount of mesh tension that I'm seeing means that that solution is also invalid. But just wanted to show that, you know, sometimes I will go in and just experiment with a couple of alternative strategies just to see what's the best one for this particular level of subdivision. So we will just have to live with it. We could come back and revisit it, but topological obsession is definitely the biggest time waster on a project, helping these videos easily get over one hour, which is always my goal to avoid. My goal is to keep these videos somewhat timely. So with this, you know what's gonna happen next. And really what's gonna happen next is we're gonna remake this whole piece because this one appears to be just a little bit smaller whenever we zoom out. But let's try seeing what it looks like. R, four or five, let's apply to rotation and mirror. We didn't have to apply to rotation for this, but it's just easier. So if we come out of local mode, this is what we're looking at. So Really, I feel that these flaps are cartoonishly big. And while accuracy is in our 100% goal, we don't wanna be that inaccurate. So I'm gonna go ahead and refill this. We'll remove the mirror. And I'm just extruding this back down, just rebuilding the shape because we failed. And you know, that's just life. It happens, sometimes you fail and you go in and you make the exact same mistake again. So let's look at this from top view and we want four. Let's try with four SX. So we can reinforce this loop. Right now we have kind of a square kind of system going. So if we look at it in subdivision without sub D on, this is what we're looking at. So obviously this area is going to need some work like that. And the top is fine at this time. So we can put a loop to reinforce and just protect this area because we don't want anything bad to happen to it, of course. But if we look at this, we see that we're definitely going to need the reinforcements that we had previous. So let's just get in and begin working it. And because we don't see subdivision edit mode, once we finish and we tab out, we'll just be either, wow, we really fixed that area or wow, we really need to fix that area one of the two so looking at it and just thinking aloud and you know not bad at all could be worse you know we could slide this off really relax this area to be let's press e to make it even and we'll just slide it away so we get something like that and then by placing a loop in between and beveling it 
but then consolidating it down the line like so we can really get some good mileage out of this because we don't have to circumnavigate the entire form in these loops but just for the sake of what we're trying to go for you know all we're doing is reattempting it with a little bit more simplicity than previous and sometimes that's all it takes I mean with subdivision I never am completely understanding of what the uh, win criteria is because you would think that just having smooth and flowing geometry is nice but you know there's creases and curves that come with the territory and sometimes I feel the true uh, winning criteria if we're talking in dynasty warrior terms is to you know kill the commander we gotta get all the angles you know all the crucial angles those are the things I feel that help people associate with and form but just like that we have created the same thing as previous let's come out of local and just look at this and we didn't even save the previous version but I can tell you it was just too big it looked terrible and we're also going to need to get rid of that at some point but let's just live for now so I'm going to select these two points and just perform a very massive convergence with Jay and we can just alleviate some of this very obvious and unneeded geometric stress we are creating so I'm just selecting these two points pressing J and then we'll just dissolve their angled counterparts so something like that we can grab the whole thing but we want to rotate in object mode because we can utilize the origin and let's just mirror it to the other side and we see that all of our areas look congruent and we're able to keep moving on with our piece so there's still a bunch of micro areas inside that must be resolved like the ones that I am highlighting and dissolving but theoretically they are all quads even though we could you know what am I doing with my life really what am I doing with my life delete this delete this what are we doing let's get in here Roll the Wheel of Fortune. RIP, Mr. Trebek. So let us think about what we want to do here. This is our solution that we have. We'd never solved this properly. And I was about to leave it as a un unsolved mystery, which is fine. There's enough of those in America. In fact, I think there's more mysteries unsolved than solved at this point. But let us continue on solving some of these mysteries so that way our geometry isn't found dead in the woods with animal, bar with animal bite marks. So we're just grabbing all this, deleting it because why not? And we are looking a lot better with this shape. So the process of correcting topology is, you know, once you build it, it gets easier, guys. I mean, maybe maybe it doesn't. I'm, I'm probably lying to you. Maybe it doesn't get easier. I mean, look at this part. This part's next. And this part is fun. So we're still on a 32 round, round circle. And because subdivision's on, we're getting funny dots. So I'm just going to turn off subdivision for a moment. And really just eyeballing this. So we're going to bring it out about that far. Let's select this shape and turn subdivision back on and our origins up here all the way up here and I need it down here just kidding but yeah, our origin was way up there so let's duplicate the cylinder S Z S shift and Z which basically will make it scale on everything but the Z and we're just going to move it over to the side and begin dealing with this particular engine so this particular area I'm not even sure I think I think this area pushes the water let's see there's a picture that points at it it's the brushless induction motor so the motor if I call it the motor am I wrong that's no, just kidding but just looking at some of my references over here on the side that one's probably my best shot at understanding this thing which is actually kind of the same image that we're looking at here except that one's like a super small one that one's actually more accurate. However, that's way blurrier than what I have over here. 
but I can't be opening like 50 reference images over in in Blender. I could, but it's, it's so unnecessary. So Z to change your display type is probably the only pie in Blender I don't like at all. Like it drives me nuts. I never ever want to just quickly change my view over to render. If I do, I'll click the button to change it over to render. But whenever I'm working, maybe not so much. Let's apply our scale. And we're just gonna bevel this and we see that we can't really do a lot with the bevel. In fact, we're gonna give it four segments, four, but we're gonna set our shape to 0.5 so that way we at least get a nice rounded bevel because profile is replaced with the word shape in this F9. I mean, I didn't make it, don't ask me about it. But we're just getting on with this, just adding in these cylinders and you know, I look at the image and the image is lying to me and telling me truth and lying to me. It's like, yo, bro, there's, there's stuff here, man. There's some good stuff in here. You know, don't forget the notches. You know, last time I forgot the notches, they won't let me forget. So obviously we're going to minimize our work here. So let's first union this together. Doesn't matter if we use an exact or fast, as long as the Boolean connects. And we are going to just add some loops to the main shape to just quarantine these areas. Just so whenever we do apply, it's a lot easier. And really destructive, just work and go kind of method. I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if it scared most people away because of the great fear and intimidation it takes to model so confidently. You know, it's like, um, God, I can't can't make any jokes you guys every joke I just I, I, I hear backlash in my head but you know we got to have courage and be brave all right and I'll leave it at that so if we look at this we see that because we have a rounded formation convergence that it's just not going to be a good day for us I mean it probably is I'm over here listening to some feist so definitely as chill as possible on my side but what we're seeing here with all of these points just converging it's just not going to work out well we just need to survive subdivision so obviously a great simplification will have to occur and with that we can just do some gentle redirects in hope of just maintaining some sort of control, but I can tell you that it's filling with water, but we're almost out of this. It gets crazy before it gets better, mm, or, or it just gets worse and worse, and, and then you have a demise. So we're looking at this, and we're just thinking about how we want to continue on this formation that we've built because it's definitely getting experimental with the amount of reductions that we're attempting to do before we converge at this point at the bottom. So first thing I'm gonna do is lock it in from this angle and we're gonna need to press Alt X to use mirror and we're gonna change it to use view and we're gonna change it to use modifier and apply. And let's just modify or apply. It almost worked. We almost got away with it if it wasn't for those pesky kids. So let us snap our cursor here and we're just locking in our view. Let's try it again. Let's also use cursor. If we mirror by cursor, did it work out? Highly doubtful, but we are going to roll with it. Even though I see some big pole happening, I mean big pole action happening. And this area is like the Batman symbol we also really need to probably protect our perimeter. So all this nonsense is nonsense in lieu of what we actually need to do, which is build an underground railroad to freedom all the way through this. So let us just begin sliding in. Just dissolving points maintaining the flow that matters most because you know sometimes you get blind looking at this geometry but really there's only one flow that matters the perimeter 
you show me a model, I'll be looking at your parameters. If you're modeling super low poly, I'll say, ah, you were able to get so far without any parameter loops. However, I do see it in quite a few models and I find it to be a bit of a curiosity. I'm like, wow, how do these people not protect their parameters? You know, maybe I'm maybe I'm a sub D modeler or training wheels. That's probably the case. Like I said, I'm not a I'm not a modeling advisor, unless you hire me to be. But let's look at this from view. Alt X, modify or apply again, just to keep things congruent. So now we have a flow going here. We have a flow going nowhere. So who did it? Who broke the flow? Who broke the sacred flow? of our people because that flow terminates here so that means we need to fulfill the prophecy this area is just a mess simplification will be for the best we'll just let sub d handle it so something like that and if we check our flows we are almost making it up to the top of this beanstalk look at us talking about this potentially insignificant part for so long but that's the thing I try to um, express to people is what's insignificant if you're able to do it then it's not insignificant you know if you're gonna if you're gonna cut corners cut the corners that no one's gonna be looking for but if you cut the corners right in front of the viewers eyes then you're just begging for a Hey man, that doesn't look very realistic or, you know, one of those sort of comments. So we're just working it and let's take it in the subdivision just to see what our solutions looking like. And I can live with that. I can live with that. So like a bad guy in a lifetime movie, I'm just going to just walk away from, <laughs> walk away from this and find my next victim. So this circle is not a circle. That circle feels like an oval. So we need to alt X, X, change it to modifier and apply and just see what we did to our circle. So we did some non circle things to our circle and now we've created basically a non circle. So how are we going to fix this? How are we going to fix this? Like what have we done? That is the question. Now I've run into an issue I did not expect. Here I was merging across circles like a lunatic, thinking I could just get away with it. And like the villains in Scooby-Doo, you just can't keep getting away with this. Not, not to protect some holiday retreat. So how to split this, how to split this? Well, I'm gonna grab all of these, V, give them a good rip. We'll press P to separate that. Let's just delete the rest because it's not working out. And all this topology work I just did, I'll tell you what, Bobby, I'm not about to redo it, but look how off we were from being a circle. This would have been a very lopsided engine. So if you're following this like a tutorial, do not. I would consider this more of a demo of basically what to do and not to do, but I definitely do not do anything that I've done up to this point. Otherwise you will be doing this. Let's V rip it, making even less of it remain. And I just feel like we did such good progress with the cylinder that It'd just be a shame for us to lose all of that. So let's poke. Yeah, you know, really just thinking on my feet here. And we are going to remove. Let's also do the same to the bottom. And let's just grab this edge, this edge. V L P. We can get rid of that. And so now let's really analyze what we're looking at here. So if we look at this wireframe, we have that many loops in order to merge in that many loops. And so really this is looking like super silly, like we should not even be attempting this, but I did so much work to get this to work. So 
you know, I'm about to get weird with it. Let's first snap to We want to first snap to this area. But it's not going to work because it's not our furthest. It's more like, um, let's see what options we have. Plus it's intermediate active. And from here, we're just going to set our 3D cursor. I notice it's a perfect blender is strange in the snapping department, but we're just going to rotate it until we're just about in the form. And it looks like this is about as much flexibility as we'll be able to get with this. So half of this is going to need to be mirrored over from what we merge. So let's get in and send this thing to its final destination. All of this just has to go. And we could probably have redone this so much faster. Just with our linear flow in mind, just getting in there and just reconstructing it. But I'm just, like I said, I'm a weirdo. Sometimes I just don't want to give up the work I just did. So, pressing L, geez, L and then P. I have to press L like 50 times there. Explain that. And how do I want to do this? You know, I see more possibilities now, like this one, which isn't my favorite, but let me just show you. So we basically put the mesh back together. We perform a union merge, and then we just solve the immediate area, like so. You know, we get rid of the topology work that we did for the edges, because we're gonna have to redo it anyways. So we just take something like this, Union, we see that it doesn't work on exact. Let's try it with fast. Fast isn't going to work either, so let's try to fill in whatever holes exist. Maybe bring it inside. We see that that also did not work. Let's try to change it over to exact. At this point, with a face on the inside, looks like we are going to be able to survive. So, visual geometry to mesh. And not the prettiest result, I know, but. We are just going to quickly get in and fix this and pretend like this very weird situation did not come up. So first I for inset. We can get rid of what the border added to this because we don't need that at all. All we need is the original geometry. So with Verdi merge on, we are going to have to just simplify. But if we don't protect our boundaries, at the bottom with at least one loop and press P, press A, then it's going to get messy. So we're just really looking at what we have here. And the first thing I think is that we should set origin from here to here. I don't know why that fixed the uh, change the normal shading. But basically if we press alt x we now are able to mirror in this area but let's try to be a little more intimate with it so maybe something like that and our normals on this mesh no nope, no normals let's sharpen it just to try to get it back in the right region of reality and we see that you know for us to be able to mirror this we are definitely going to need to rotate that a bit so Let's just take it back. Like I said, it's definitely going to become a lot harder before it becomes easier. And it looks like we have reached the end of our undo. So we just bring back the initial mesh, which that ain't nothing. We can just rotate it 45, maybe not on the 3D cursor, R45, R45. And from here, apply rotation, apply to the other side. And let's try that again. Didn't expect to be struggling on this part. There's another part coming up that's more of a struggle. So with this, we just hide everything else. And I'm going to first set my origin on this mesh to be here. 
so that way we can look at it from this view and let's shift C place our cursor in the center so that way I can just use numpad period and we just rotate along You know, we can't get it absolutely perfect, but we can get it pretty dang close. So I'm just gonna bring this up, which means that for this object, we're also going to need to shift S, origin to selection. And how do we wanna do this? Let's go to set origin. We press S to select anything else. And so now we have the ability to use the dots of the secondary object to set the rotation. So I'm just going to press R for rotation and we just drag that. And so now if we do a mod and apply, we'll apply on the correct side, but we see that that also didn't work. So let's get to the nitty gritty of what this circle is. We're definitely going to need a circle on the other side coming out. So just all sorts of planning mishaps coming to haunt coming to roost at the same time so first we'll just deal with this and then we'll deal with that so union and let us just apply this boolean and the good news is that whenever we perform a mirror mod we're actually mirroring it correctly which is first and foremost what we need with this particular area that's going to be propagated four times and be a highly trusted area so let's press I, something like that. And this whole loop assembly doesn't even need to be so high. We could take this down some to something like that. And let's also sharpen it just for no other reason than just getting the shading to look good because we're gonna need to basically protect this perimeter and we're gonna need to protect this perimeter so that way anything we do in between doesn't sacrifice anything meaningful. So I'm just adding a loop, bringing it up, making a connection, just, you know, the, the quad thing. Whose edge is that? That edge, it was about to get deleted. Almost misread who it belonged to. GZ, select these two, J. And with that, we are done except for realigning that area to be a quad, turning that area into a quad, and then Alt-X, modifier applying to the other side. Um, I also want to take this moment to Shift-S and place a cylinder, because we're gonna need this cylinder sticking out of the other side. But do we need to add it at this time? That is truly the question. So. Let's look at this area, which is going to be a bit of a subdivision solve frenzy. But first we will protect the perimeter. So that way, whatever solutions we use have nothing to do with the perimeter boundaries. One, two. And we can just turn that into a quad, but if we mirror it, we need to requad it. So. Now we have something like that going on. Let's remove all of our sharp markings and we're gonna just save this as, let's see. I just wanted to make sure I use the same name as the last one and I didn't remember it off the top of my head. Otherwise, that moment would have been brought to you by power save. So from here, we're just bringing up loops for reinforcement, always turning off the Medusa's mask that is subdivision in edit mode. And just looking at what we have so far. So, so far so good if we press Alt V and we get out, not too many hits on the surface, despite the fact that, you know, it had a really long night. So we're just going to take this surface and this surface and we're just going to talk with it. So let's get rid of any loops, uh, any subdivision displaying. And in order to make this merge nice and good, we're going to need to give it accommodating loops just so it's a smooth transition when it moves into the neighborhood. So something like that. And then on the inside, because we can't add a loop cut, we are going to need to 
make a selection just like shown maybe all the way through and through and then just right click and subdivide and we can gg slide to basically the region that we aim to protect you know just in the ballpark I mean I'm pretty sure I could also snap to it but I cannot so sometimes I don't even try so something like that is now what we're looking at with this which a ton of work but once we join it together and then we remove the doubles we've got 22 24 let's shift tilde to check for holes and so far so good so we mirror it to the other sides and congratulations we made this piece so if we were bulling around it would have been short work but because of the workflows that we chose to employ for this it definitely adds a little bit more to the difficulty curve which is its own challenge and reward but let's continue on with this piece so there's also some little knots on the side but let's finish up with the block and portion first so the bottom appears to have a connection with the base so to create that I'm just going to scale out the base kind of weird I've just been doing weird things with subdivision lately like these things and just seeing how they look integrated up against the surface if it has that same kind of look to it or if there's further changes that have to be made in order to get a surface to match up to something like that but we could also merge them together and begin dealing with them like so but it's easier to have a little fun with it first so I'm going to control plus and it's just delete faces which will turn this into a really flat piece so there should be no more extra lip action happening this also means I can slide this up if I wanted to basically make this more or less rounded however just looking at I'm just pondering what's causing it to have such a flat look to it I mean I definitely don't want to break the perimeter that we have set for it but I, I'm over obsessing so the next thing is we have an original cylinder somewhere also, why is this piece not in a collection? Why is this piece not in a collection? Why are these two pieces not in a collection? So we're gonna select everything and just control click manage to evict everything that's not needed. And now we can go over to this collection and begin talking about it. So what is this cylinder? Is this our progenitor cylinder? It's hard to tell. Just looking at it in edit mode, just seeing if I'm able to snap and move it. It moves so far. Which option that? Alright, closest. So probably something like that would actually suffice for the cylinder. Just wondering, are there any cross points that we can use to basically you know usually if you have two points across a circle you can just snap your cursor in between and then from there you have where you are able to basically jump in and insert your cylinder but we see that that's not entirely accurate so it's just going to be a little bit of a pain going forward we probably shouldn't have deleted the original part or maybe shouldn't have done the mirroring stuff that we we're trying to do do being smart it happens so i'm just taking this brief moment to just really analyze the reference image which according to the image this part kind of terminates in like so then comes out to form this piece let's press Control b but we want to press p and set our profile to one and then press A to go back to adjusting the bevel. Let's also not look at subdivision and edit mode because we don't want it to be slow. So something about like that is what I'm seeing. And so in this area, we're just gonna insert a cylinder and do my favorite thing that people hate to see me do, and that's eyeball it. 
can't trust my eyeballs, but it's the only choice we have. So something like this, we now have the cylinder placed and I'm just going to bring this up and we could even scale this down just a little bit. Just, you know, when I, as I look at images, I just see hallucinations and just various things just reach out to me. And let us go for this next piece, which is such a tough read. But I'm gonna th I'm gonna say that there is a box. First of all, let's delete this and do this in a way proper. Just grid fill. Maybe set it to something good like eight, a divisor of two. And with this point in the center, we can just shift A at our box, GZ1, GZ1 to place it above the cursor. And then let's also shift S origin to cursor, which means that whenever we scale it down, we now have this area as our origin. And I'm just scaling this down to just kind of fit the reference image because it's a hard read, but we just try our best as with all these. And so with the initial attempt at this, I actually took a really slapdash simplistic approach that worked for me, but may not work for you. So just looking at these pictures, you know, just take it into shapes. I see like there's kind of a suction shape happening here with a straight edge, with a slide and a slide. I call um, these, these ramps upward slides because, you know, it's just a slide to me. So let's just add a loop. Let's press S, X and work on this first area that's sucking in. Of course, we need to set our profile to 0.5, which means that the next time we need to reinforce the bevel, we need to set it back to one. Part of why I call that soling the bevel because, you know, it's just a back and forth and I just, it drives me crazy. I can do like 30 back and forth before I'm like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? So we got that one. Now what we want to do is actually jump to end gun and box cutter and we'll perform a cut like so. And we don't want to array, so I'm just pressing V to get rid of that. And what we want is to bevel. And so let's just shift click to bring it to live. And I'm going to go in edit mode and unmark these edges, basically isolating the bevel to just one edge. And so with this bevel added, we can now mirror this to the other side giving us something like this. And of course we can use ever scroll to recall it and just think about what we want to do with it. We also want to add auto smooth to it via shift clicking sharpen to trigger auto smooth just so things just continue to look nice. So just looking at the area on the side of it because we don't want to sacrifice too much. In fact, on this one, it looks a lot straighter. So let's pretend like we're not going to try to go for that side bow or maybe we can go for it later whenever subdivisions in play, but really it's just not in the cards at this particular moment. So really just analyzing this and thinking about how we want to go about this. I'm going to shift A at a cylinder because we don't have enough problems to solve here. So maybe something like that. Let's shift D, S, X and take this to the other side, S, X and just bring this out to something like that. So definitely getting a little bit closer. However, you know, with these things, it's always so abstract until it comes together, at least for me. So I want to do a lot of things, but before I do a lot of things, I got to do a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm kidding. But seriously, I do have to do a lot of things. So first, we want to cut this out using box, but maybe not too deep, just a little deep, you know. We'll bevel it, even though that's not necessary because all of that's been covered by a corner. But now we can go in and begin just cutting. So I see, I see one, here that converges 
with the round area because it has to be painful. And then I see another one here. Let's see. One, two, three. All right, so it looks like there's three total according to the reference. So let's try going for that. Let's use Everscroll to recall our cutter. And why do I have a solidified cutter? That's the problem. We don't want it solidified. Let's recall this other cutter. And we'll just scale that out, bring it in. Let's grab the entire cutter and just move it over. So we have just a bigger edge happening. Let's Alt X, modify our mirror it to the other side, which just eviscerated our middle. So let's use ever scroll to bring back wrong wrong scroll. We want ever scroll, not full shift. And once we bring back the correct one and move it over, we're now back in business. So just looking at it, whenever it comes to these arcs, I think I'm going to try that just through subdivision methods. But, you know, the hard part is going to be this, where we basically have two loops. One needs to be here. One needs to be here. And we need to alt click EM macro just to push this out. So that way we have it feeling like it's sitting on top of this. But before it can feel that way, we have to go in local mode, grab all these pieces, E, Z, S, Z, S, and X. So we scale it out something like that. And while it's sitting on it pretty exact, we are probably going to take advantage of that. But just making adjustments and just looking at it to really think about how, we, also let's clean the mesh because we're, we're gonna solve it so hard. You know, I'd solve it. I'd solve it hard, you guys, just sad. In fact, we always are, aren't we? Getting in here, fighting those battles. No one in their right mind would want to fight. But if you can model a pressure washer, you know, you won't be fated to use one, hopefully. But if you cannot model a pressure washer, then there might be a chance your future is going to involve some pressure washing unless you're a trust fund baby in which case you're better off than me so let us alt x mirror modifier to the other side mirror modifier to the other side of that so this is kind of what we're looking at so far so this is our engine at this point of time this piece obviously too tall this is a short little fatty, but not too short, you know, so it's a tough read. We're just going to move this down until the square piece is sitting precisely on top. We probably could have moved it all together, but we're just getting in and just having some fun with this process. And for this piece, I'm going to rotate 45 because we need this to actually be mountable uh, post post bottling. And let's also add this back area because the back area is kind of fun, or at least it was fun for me last time. Who knows, today it might be hell on earth. Um, let's control scroll. And I thought I wanted it below it, but actually I want it inside of it. So let's just bring this down or bring this up, depending on your orientation. And we'll select this E, Alt S to push it out both ways. And we got such a unique result with that. Let's try that again. Actually, we got two meshes now. So let's just delete one because we're not trying to be weird here. And let's just delete this face. And the first thing that comes to my mind is S and Z to scale it out. And I feel like there's a boxy bottom and top on this thing. But, you know, everything's a hard read and a judgment call because, I mean, in this picture, it definitely looks rounded. 
So I mean, I shouldn't mess around and extrapolate decisions from Lord Pressure Washer the second. No, I'm kidding, but it's a it's a hard um, it's a hard read. I mean, we're looking at what I got in paragraph. I mean, I mean, you have to model from an image. You have to be so obsessive with images. I feel, but it is part of part of life. You know, this image that I had of the piece looked kind of darling. In fact, I'm going to take a moment to screenshot an image that I have in paragraph purely for the purposes of replacing this one in Blender with a better image, just so y'all can judge me more fiercely. And we're just going to E extrude just to bring it out. And we're going to just grab this bottom circle and scale it to accommodate, but really that one just needs to go and we need to re-extrude re this flatly and then press F. So really just pondering if I'm misreading this shape because, you know, it just looks round, it, you know, looks so round and round is just easy. You know, we just bevel it, round it out and leave town. But we may revisit it. And let's also unmark everything. We want to grab our boundary edges and, you know, sharpening things is just such a uh, big step at this time. Let's really analyze what we have here. So maybe something like that. And instead of giving this reinforcement, we're just going to give it uh, sharp edges for now just so that way we can come back and address it later and let's get in and actually begin addressing this this terrible piece and also we still need to add the notches to this shape and it looks like there's one two three four of them you know kind of like a some Charlie Brown eyebrow so I'm going to shift D remove subdivision because if we use Smart Apply Clone, it's just going to um, apply subdivision, which is what we definitely do not want. And what we want is one loop, two loop, three loop, four loop. And let's just grab it all the way from the base to the top. Like so. And we'll just press Control B to bevel. And if we wanted to, we could solve this to unify into the mesh, all quad, all nice, but pick your battles, what do you want? You want this to flow into this geometry because that geometry is sparse. Just saying it is sparse. So it's easier for us to just duplicate it, solidify it, you know, maybe sharp mark the boundaries, place it up above subdivision. We could also give it another subdivision. That is not subdivision. We'll give it another subdivision. And why does it look so terrible? We want to turn off the weighted normal toggle just in case. And we're just really analyzing this. So, you know, I actually want to clean all the meshes. And instead of uh, loop cutting every single one of these meshes, which would just be a bit of a process, it's probably easier for us to press Q, go under mesh tools, activate dice, and just hit these with a dice on the Z, which we see that isn't gonna work out because we're in this version of Blender. Um, I keep opening Blender 3.0, knowing that there's an issue with knife, so let's just get our loops in, mirror it to the other side, and be mature adults, because I don't even feel like closing Blender and reopening it. Sometimes I'm just super lazy, but the habit of always wanting to use a cutting edge version of Blender, I'm telling you, it will be my downfall. I just love being beyond up to date whenever it comes to Blender. So let's Alt X. We're just sending that to the other side. So real basic, you know, I didn't want to get too intricate with it, but we can always go back in and still adjust the thickness and things like that versus if we would have topologically merged it, it just would have been a done deal. Um, that's it for that. And just looking at this, I feel like there's a, some sort of piece in between bridging it together just kind of extending it up and taking it out so 
looking at the time of the clock, we might go for that as well. But let's just get in here. You know, there's no time like the present. Union. That will work with fast. This will not work with fast. We gotta change it to exact. And from this moment, we need to just apply every modifier and go into local mode and really just get to business. So no time to even say, oh my God, what terrible geometry it gave us. We don't even have time for that. What terrible geometry it gave us, just kidding. But uh, shift tilde, we're looking at our boundaries just to see if we got any garbage on the inside and it looks like all all um, all agents are a go so you know me first thing I'm gonna do is protect my circles because it's important that they have their flexibility so let's click on mark and I'm just gonna press B in order to bevel that edge and I suppose the edge underneath but not this edge just another curiosity I'll tell you our work is never done And for this area, we're going to need to really just get crafty with it. So I'm going to draw a knife box across a couple of locations that I know I won't regret. And this will give me starting geo I need to begin working in these flows. But let's deal with our most critical areas first. This will need to be rounded. So we could give it a profile of one by pressing P during bevel. So let's do that. And let's do the same thing with this side. So now both sides at least have their round areas that are specified for you know, expansion. So if we control B, we can bring in another loop and bring it down to protect this area. So by bringing this up, we are able to just get in here and just begin merging these areas and just cleaning up kind of what we're looking at here. So for this, we could have it do a flow redirect all the way around protecting it, or we can do what you just saw me do there where it basically has an early termination. So let's bring this over. Keep in mind our goal isn't perfect topology. That's for you guys to aim for. For me, it's just surviving subdivision. And also creating the shape that I, I um, endeavor to create, of course. But otherwise, um, topology is a never ending battle. You know, even if you win, you'll still maybe feel like a loser. I mean, I should say you still will. But, you know, there's some times where I've created a form that I wanted, and then at the end, I'm still inundated with, with dots and holes and just curiosities with the mesh that you know, require a shaman. So we are just slide city. We don't want to give too much to this. In fact, for this area, I'm just going to press I to just perform an inset. And that means that these two can merge. We can dissolve that. We can merge those there automatically. And really our goal is to have a loop going along this area. So let's make that happen. This one obviously isn't going to be able to live. Neither is that part. You know, with insets, there's always a termination point that you must adhere to. Um, where basically, you know, insets are great, but on a topological front, there's always a side that must be resolved because otherwise it will um, dwell into nonsense. So there's a couple of ways I could have solved this. Could have diamond quadded it but that would have uh, maybe interfered with my junction area a little bit, so it doesn't matter. This geometry is ours, we can just do what we want with it. So, select these two points, quad, 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 all quad. I mean, quads are just four edged faces. So let's now deal with this area. We can dissolve that edge. Let us take this 
back to zero. You know, what would the Planeteers do? Be working with Hoggish Greedly. I'm destroying the planet. Uh oh, my music cut out. Breaking my focus. So we're just in here, just topo solving. You know, devil may care attitude about what sub D is going to do. You know, we don't know what sub D is going to do because we don't even have sub D telling us what it's going to do. And as usual, after an hour of working standing up, my arm is killing me. So it is time to take a seat. All right, back to work. So this is one of those meshes where it's solving. It's like, uh, God, but he can't hear you. You want to solve this yourself. So I'm going to grill this shift H. And before we get blasphemous, we're just going to control T, alt J and begin solving this out. So we could just extend everything to its nearest ending and just call it a day. But really, we should analyze what we're setting ourselves up for. So that can be a little hard with how close things are with our geometry. But maybe something like this. And we can just shift H to isolate just this. So this is the mess that we have to solve, really. It's not that it's not that bad. I mean we could basically give this as many loops as we want, which for me is about four loops. You know, I'm a bit frugal whenever it comes to loops. Also, what happened to my music? Alright, back in the game. So we are just grabbing and making connections. That's all we can do. Just a little bit of geometric networking. Alright, so maybe something like that. And from here, let's press Control R and let's undo until we're looking back at this particular point. So, whenever we try to add a loop and it does like that, it is because of this topology. So, let's Alt H and just take a look at what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get a loop up to here and a loop to here going across there without too much to have to solve this is such a mesh mess to have to get in and get to the bottom of but let's select this face control plus 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 and we grew it up somewhat let's press shift h and now we are looking at the bolt so if we go to it and top view or a bottom view I guess in this case we are going to just send over our offer this is what we have to negotiate with and they will send back our counter offer security is on its way please leave which you know we can give it a counter offer I am the secure, no, I'm kidding, but let's just grab this and we want to probably, you know, I want to merge some things, but you know, it's a risky bet, but I'm looking at some serious loose ends. So we are definitely going to merge. It's too early for these loose ends. And also this piece probably going to be the most challenging piece of it you know we've been working our way up to it and we've been doing the dance and we've been dancing with this and the dance will what happened to our piece I thought that slapped these keyboard keys so hard accidentally 
move my pad over on the keyboard by accident, which is always a nuisance. All right. We're really giving us some extra loops. It's like, yo, I, I sent you my terms. Why are you sending me these extra loops back? It's like, I, I get it, but we need to make some amendments on this contract. You know, how about that as a, as a counter offer? So if we Alt H and we get out and we look at this, we're not doing so bad. All we have to do is survive one more of these um, jungle shape adventures and this piece will be put together. And then all we can all we can do is just hold ourselves and cry because it wasn't accurate enough to the image. That is, you know, none of these images are ortho, they're all in perspective which is what makes this um, particularly fun. Like, Im like blank image modeling is something I spend a lot of time practicing. Like one of these days I feel like I'll be good at it. Like um, people that sk sketch girls, um, just one of those things that you just gotta practice. But one day my ability to extrapolate from images will just be where I want it. But, you know, as with all skills, it's just one of those things you got to practice. Not going to learn anything watching me except how to get yourself in some serious geometric situations and hopefully how to get yourself out. So just looking at this, just thinking about what we want to do. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. I mean, really, we dissolved an edge that's critical to the form. We can't be playing around like that. We've got to watch ourselves. But let's let's send our offer over to the other side. So, uh, you know, I'll offer you one vert, two vert, three vert. What are you going to give me back? Well, the other side's like, I ain't giving you nothing. You ain't getting jack. Thanks for the free geometry. All right, fine. We can roll with that. So we're just selecting two pieces of geometry and just putting their stories together. We'll press I to just really inset this similar to the other side because buffering is the only protection we have. And we begin making some questionable decisions that I'm pretty sure are reflected on the other side. So I'm willing to negotiate with up to, let's add a loop right here merge it last merge it last let's add a loop here merge it last just so we don't have any um who's the end con just kidding it's this guy he's the end con and this guy is also the end con i mean in the earlier videos you saw me using um you know, polygon debug, but really that's only needed if you're just trying to be some sort of poly, um, poly goblin. You know, I'm trying to figure out the best term because so many words are no longer able to be used because they're either racist or sexist or whatever, you know, or they connotate World War II people or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I mean, to connotate whether, uh, what, or they bring up World War II people. You know, I guess every term's off limits now. The final frontier, English itself. So, I'm always, I'm always pondering the uh, next jokes before I make them, just so I don't offend anyone. All right, so we got our last appointment of the day. We press I. To really just set the stage and we can just freestyle this meaning I'm going to send my own negotiation to the other side that we will just accept on our on our own because we're we're in charge of this but this edge this edge has to go of course we can forge a connection like so but we don't want to deal with the situation we just had. So I'm going to GZ down to here. Let's add another point. 
GZ down to here. You know, every t as I go through this process, I'm just contemplating the plethora of tools that could exist for resolving some of these issues. However, the hard part is that even if they were made, um, you know, I don't think people would get it. They'd just be like, these are more tools I don't get. So let's, um, let's stick with vanilla. You know, sometimes that's why it's just best to leave it be. No need to rewrite the will. But yeah, I see a plethora of ways that this could just be so much faster. It, it um, blows my mind. In fact, let's not do what we just did. Let's continue on our nice, peaceful path. We're on this path of non-violence. So maybe something like this. But yeah, when it comes to uh, subdivision conversion, you know, one of the first things I imagine is this like sort of netting tool. But definitely something that would um, help formulate the nets because the nets are what we spend all our time doing. You know, like it's like what are we losing time to? We're losing our time to building these nets. I mean. Most of the nets are important, like the perimeter. The perimeter is able to be handled easily by the bevel. But the netting process of us just making the connections, I feel like it's um, getting brainless. Like if we really think about it, like there's no reason for us to make every connection, make every house call to connect these people with each other. Really, we should just automate that but I don't know it'll, it'll take some contemplation like I said um, it's always a double-ended sword you know I know that it would be cool but I get so many weird complaints like I'm not even gonna go into it but the only answer is there's a video about it there is a video about it And there's a playlist on it. That's my other one. There's definitely a playlist on it. So we're just really just looking at things, just thinking about where we can add a little extra geo. We never got in and resolved this area. So let's start talking about it. So that's done. And that's done. So that conversation's over. But we do want to also protect our boundary. So inset is definitely the best at protecting your boundary. You just have to really be thinking about what flow you're about to get from it because it's a flow that's entirely circular. So sometimes an entirely circular flow is just real bad. Is how M Mr. Mackey would say it. Boys, always protect your perimeter, okay? But, you know, something like that. So, let's just remove everything. We're just going to extrude to this point. And we're just partying, just jumping into some sub D. And let's try grid fill. Looks like we can't grid fill. Let's just fill it in, I guess, which is pretty much where we were before. And I'm just going to solve it manually. We could have added probably one more edge or dissolved an edge and it would have been good to go. But I just know that the solution that Gridfill would have given us would have been meh at best. And God, we got to turn a lot of panel options at its worst. But Gridfill's a beauty. It's a beauty. I'm telling you, every time I roll it, I'm like, oh baby, we're about to hit a perfect loop. Big whammy, big whammy, big whammy. So now that we've turned this into tries, we could, or turn this into quads with maybe just one try. Let's just get back. Oh, what am I doing? I, I just start extrapolating. Sometimes my brain just starts seeing details that are needed in an area. So we're going to save the file and we're going to unmark everything and let's jump it up to subdivision. And so it's not 
the biggest jump, you know, you're not going to see just something tremendously spectacular, but the form is smooth. And that's all that we want with sub D. Just no complaints, just smooth the form. However, we are going to have to consolidate a loop in order to maintain this area because we don't want to have just a, a pole hurting it. So this area also is kind of questionable, but you know, you want to get in there, you want to fight it, have at it. So for this area, I am going to try to go for that, even though it's not the best idea. However, if we look at this, it kind of terminates before it even arcs up. It just stops short before it even goes up. And then there's a second, there's a washer, um, is how Goofy would say it, a washer. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna call it that. And let's just grid fill, roll the wheel. And let's just shift click curve extract. And we're just gonna place that before solidification. So that way it's nice and rounded. Just building onto it. And we could also, you know, put one more loop here that'll really help, you know, solidify it because I've never seen a washer so round. Nearby. I'll start doing goofy imitations, but we should remain on topic. So let's just apply the solidify. You know, no one's gonna no one's gonna call me out for it, I assume. And so now we can just grab this, shift click curve extract again, in order to extract this up into its own piece. Let's apply solidify. Let's shrink this area, let's add a loop here, let's dissolve this loop, and then we add a loop here. In order to get something like that, I mean, I'm really extrapolating. I can't, I can't help it. It's, it's my it's my curse. But we are going to need to go under polygon, switch to six, jump off of the dots that are available. But we're in view, so no dots to jump off of, and put one of these numbers in there. So I'm going to press Shift T to taper it, just because I want it to read good whenever we look at it and. Let's just take this piece, apply the bull in, and this is our mess now. And this is, I'm kidding, I was about to repeat it like three times. Um, let's clean the mesh, and this is our mess now. So, origin to selection, mirror, mirror. And first thing we want to do is reinforce this area. All right, there's some points happening here and we need them not happening. We don't want to mirror either at this time because we are getting up close and personal with this mesh. Mm -mm. Really not liking what I'm creating in front of my face, but Actually, I know what I'm going to do, and you guys know what I'm going to do. We can't let such a uh, strong, strong question remain unanswered right in front of our faces. Same with this. We can just perfectly close this off, and I'm sure there's a way that we could have done this without uh, doing a boolean and dissolving everything. But, like I said, sometimes I just come up with an idea on the fly and I'm like, you know what? I'm at least curious in that idea's outcome. Let's get everything congruent and then we can grid fill. Something like that. Really, uh, I was trying to find the right word for it. I was about to use a not good word for it. I don't even know if people would talk about communists anymore. Um, but yeah, we got real communist loops happening in the middle, you know, from the old country. Real linear. And we'll put a loop here as well, and place a loop here. GG slide, GG slide. 
and something like that you know not a whole lot of time lost on it because once we go in and we start adding our loops of reinforcement and actually like Master Chief get in there and finish the job then it'll look great and you know we should be reusing the stuff adding them to kit up so that we can just plant them in and not have to remake this stuff every time but uh, I am a modeler so you know my practice is me refining my craft I'll never deny myself that opportunity to just get a little bit a little bit of practice in there but now we are looking at this as kind of our engine or motor so far really contemplating this area I don't know if I see something there I mean we're looking at a depth of field picture we shouldn't be extrapolating off of such an image but we do want to wrap this up because this video has gone on a little long and I do value the time of the viewer so I'm looking at it from front and now I'm looking at it from the side and what are we gonna do let's select everything parent it to this and R90 so we can just bring it down and this is the part that we are looking at so nice work so far still more work to be done for example like I said we can't even pat ourselves out on the back because we have more conversion work to be done Subdivision can really choke whenever you're using it, or F2 can really choke whenever subdivision is just present on the mesh. You know, you turn it off, it's just buttery gold. Even if you turn it off in edit mode, just, you know, over time using this uh, or doing this little sub D challenge and just discussing sub D and playing with a lot of sub D, it's just something I've noticed. It's not like a game breaker, even a bug, more of a curiosity. So. Looking at this thing and just making some hard choices, I feel like mine is a little big and for this one, this area sticks out a little bit more, but I'm probably misjudging it, but I'm definitely giving this piece too much credit. So we probably want to bring it in something like that. And so finally, let us at least give this the mount that it sits on. But also looking at this area, this area is just too darn tall. And that's what's really throwing me off. You know, the more parts we have, the more of like a uh, scale guide we start building with this thing. And from here, we'll just bring that in, not even precisely, and take a look at what we have and definitely looking a lot better still looking a bit fat on the back you got a fatty back on this uh, pressure washer we blasting from the ionosphere also in wireframe we see that our job was not complete so i x grid fill done how long was that like two seconds uh just to get that area corrected for this, we see that, you know, we do have a little bit of torsion happening here that we could relax just by sliding away. And we'll need to do that with a couple of areas that are just getting really stressed. But let's try mirroring this to something like that. Just seeing if we can actually alleviate it even just slightly. And for this piece, if we wanted to convert this to be a subdivision form, even though this thing's just going to be a total pain, um, that would just be a matter of us getting in with bevel and pressing three in order to add something like this. And of course, this is going to choke my computer and my scene if we jump this to subdivision. So let's also have some fun with it and put a triangulate on it. And then from there, slap it with a subdivision. Maybe even hit it with a weighted normal just to fix any shading that occurs. And now we have this entire thing converted up to subdivision geometry. So for this piece, it's probably for the better that we just don't have it on in the viewport just so we keep things nice and buttery. But let us get to a uh, finishing point with this motor. So now we're looking at this mount and maybe there's a better image of it. That's it from the side. 
this is definitely an episode of blurry refs. So we're back to the image that we started with. So I, from what I see, I feel that, first of all, this is way too deep. Sing it that deep. Also, another loop of reinforcement might be needed just to protect any sort of shrinkage from happening. So we're getting there. And we're just gonna extrude this out like so. And then maybe extrude it up like so, and then extrude it in to give us a piece like this. So let's bring over PRF and just take a look at this. The heck? This thing's like, wow, this side really shows you interesting profile. I was going to simplify it by a large margin. I'm sure with everything real world, it's on its way to being simplified by a real world, uh, real large margin. So instead of it just going in and just ending, every time my background changes, my computer gets slow. Let's press three, we bring this out, GG. And just thinking about how we wanna approach this. You know, I'm going to approach this by reapproaching it. So first it comes in like this, then it comes out like this, then it comes in like this. Let's see, into, away, and against is what I'm interpreting it as with this particular shape, but I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. Born wrong, but we must persist anyways. So control B, we're just gonna bevel this and press E, Alt S in order to just push it on the normals. And we see that this area did it fare so good. So let's try using a little mesh machine. Y, X, or a little unfizz knock. And we want to take it to maybe 0.120. And so what about the other side? Well, I'm just going to mirror it to the other side and then dissolve the edge in the middle, which will make all the edges even. And let's do a new origin to geometry. So that way we actually can mirror it correctly without whatever just happened. And you know, from looking at the image, I saw into the sun, I see little legs coming up and also see that the, there's like a big bolt on top of this. I mean, blurry images, uh, you know, I'd hate them if I didn't prefer them. So an unnecessary loop there. But we're just preparing it for its inevitable transition to subdivision. So maybe something like that. And just thinking about where this is going to arc and where we want it to arc. We probably want to hold these edges. You know, maintain our perimeter, of course. But we also want to maintain what we have going on in this area. So with these legs being so stiff, that's just not going to work. Let's take this one and just slide it in because I do see a little bit of a bite on the other one. And we're just going to slide this in to just make it this edge's problem. Same with this side. You know, it's your problem now. And we just continue watching and just thinking about what we want to do. We could give it a perimeter loop like this to protect it but it's about to get like really loopy. You know, subdivision is just, this is the, the story of subdivision is just looping things. However, we are going to attempt some strategies for mitigating these loops. I mean, this is where redirecting things comes in where basically by setting up something like that. And we could also set up something happening along this bottom. So I'm gonna press Alt X and with this shape, we're just gonna Alt scroll to bisect mod. And we'll split it in half.
and now we at least have half a loop because the other side is uh, you know the same and also doesn't exist allowing us to actually get in and work on this side So one, two, three, merge at last. And we'll just dissolve the loops that we don't need. And, you know, just a little bit of topology. This is the reason why topology is a thing, is because otherwise you will be trimming your models with an inordinate amount of what I call stupid loops. Like they're stupid, you don't even need them. But you sure have to have them or else let's alt X, but we press A because we want to add a new modifier. And now we actually have this mirrored over to the other side. And, you know, I almost want to take on this in a video, but I feel like this piece is its own talk altogether. And we're already looking at an hour and a half being into this video. So let's just pull back and look at our wireframe. We see what it looks like whenever mirror is after subdivision. It's just a terrible picture. And this is also a terrible picture. So we're just going to tighten that up because a tighter picture will work for us. But what I'm seeing with um, all the subdivision display showing, you know, we could select this and basically unmark it and we just ride it, you know, ride it out like that. Just see how that goes for us. But before wrapping it up, I do see some holes in this piece. So I do want to add those pieces. So I'm going to say about here. And also we are going to inset just because we don't want any, any damage. Right click, no, press Q, circle. Um, we're going to undo that and apply our scale. And then from here, press Q and do circle. And what I want to do is actually make this 100% accurate. So, I mean, as far as my go through, so we'll just go through and then press Control Alt Numpad Plus to just do a Union Boolean. And then we could just delete all the faces that were created and continue on with working. Merge these at last. And from here, let's just grab all of these. I was about to just start making connections, but we could just Control T, Alt J, our way to success. Let's see, Control T, Alt J, press F9, raise our shape settings, and we're able to get, get all the way there. So same thing with this, Control T, Alt J. But it looks like the options it chooses sometimes will limit you on the amount of faces. So it's, it's also completely random somewhat so maybe something like that and then we can just control click our curve extract to basically extract this piece into its own piece and press F I you know select these two J and we're pretty close to a wrap on this at least for this particular video because this is kind of a longer video I apologize for that but I did want to just do a video where we got in and we attempted to create this piece. However, I see that there's more pieces to it. However, this image is so blurry that I'm just going to need to find something, you know, laser sharp in order to do that. I mean, when I look at this piece that's actually connected to the front, I suppose there is even more to it that must be done. So we may be revisiting this with a part two, but I'll at least wrap, wrap this video for now. I hope everyone enjoyed. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. One final thing I do want to do though before I wrap this video is, you know, we see that this area has a lot of flush on it whenever it comes to its interaction with this piece. So if we look at ours, we see that we actually almost come all the way to the edge. So I'm just going to select all the components that we added onto this, including this piece. Let's just press G and move it. And we will just press Control P and just parent this to the selection. Keep transform. 
And now whenever we scale it, we're able to move it. But I want to select this point, Shift S, Origin to Selection. And now whenever we scale it, we can also ensure that we have a nice big flushed back and we have kind of that same scale that's going with it. In fact, as I look at that piece, I see that there's even more pieces that might be required for it, like this thing. You know, we might have to make one of those things and put it on there. But really, that's when we're starting to get really obsessive whenever it comes to the reference image. But like I said, we are just following a bunch of blurry images. But with that, I can truly finally wrap this video and I'll see you guys next time.